This project won every award because this project is a unicorn. We're in Canada. We're high grade. And so this project is unique. The awards are awards. I don't, I don't really care about awards. What I care about is you've got a big project, shallow, high grade, all, all the good stuff, right? But you got to get it financed. So you may say awards don't matter, but I just completely disagree with you. If I come in, you're a, you sell a car, and I say, can you sell my Mercedes for me? Or can you sell my old truck? What do you want to sell? I can sell a truck and make more margin than I could on maybe the, the Mercedes, to use your example, okay? So I'm worried about the economics. Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, give us a thumbs up and please remember to give us your comments below. We will try to get back to absolutely everyone and also helps us understand the sorts of questions and thoughts that you have when talking to companies. If you haven't already done so, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this one, click the notification bell. We spoke earlier today to Dev Randall, who's the CEO of Fission Uranium. Now, it's been a tough year in the uranium space and Fission has been a bit of a casualty. Their share price has dropped significantly and sitting on a market cap of about 70 million, which is hard to believe from the dizzy heights of its early days. Now, we talked to Dev about 232, the nuclear fuel working group, what CGN, their major shareholder, thinks of the current position. We also discuss salaries and remuneration for the board, and we get a commitment from Dev. Take a look at some of the topics we discussed with him in his full and frank discussion with us in the description below. And if there's anything interests you in particular, click on the timestamp and that'll take you to that part of the video. Let's hear what Dev had to say. Hey Dev, how you doing buddy? I guess I'm good considering all that's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Now, we haven't that's spoken since July. A lot's happened. I mean, a, a heck of a year, a kind of year to forget for uranium last year. Um, right. Should we go over some old ground, 232 Nuclear Fuel Working Group? What are your sure. thoughts? Well I, think, I think, well, I think all of us thought that the problem we had was the the 232 was freezing the u.s utilities but as it turned out when the thing became a non-issue price of uranium did not go up and so i think that was a big disappointment for the industry and confusing you know because so the question is where were they where did they get the uranium from were they that piled up and i think that's what remains to always be a question and when you ask people much smarter than i um the people from chemical they just say there's, you know, because there's not a transparent industry, you don't know where the uranium is coming from. But obviously, people are having, you know, uh, utilities have no way to get their needs met. Um, so I think that's been, um, but when I was in uh, early, it was in early uh, March, um, my understanding was that the inventories have significantly dropped. So for example, chemical would normally carry 30, they were down to six. Um, and they like to be at 10 at least. So really, uh, I think to, to uh, finish off on the 232 issue, I think all of us expected uh, a higher bump, you know, boom. You know, and I think we did. Remember temporarily you saw a big jump and then it came back when they heard that um, we got the Australian report on, I can't remember the time and everything jumped up, but then it came back down. So I think that's what we expect from 232. Um, all that's mute, though, when you've seen the complete destruction of market caps for Cameco, us, and our competitors um, over the concern. Uh, people to flight to liquidity, any stock with liquidity has been hit, including, um, and obviously Cameco, you know, has been down below eight. I don't remember ever being below eight. Um, and now they've closed, uh, they've closed Cigar Lake. So all that's in the past, but today I think we've got bigger issues. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Today we do have bigger issues, and I, I guess we got to think about the impact of you know COVID nineteen, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, on the mining industry as a whole for sure. And I think, you know, and I, I, I suspect the market's going to give a pass to a lot of companies, producers especially, for that for a while. Uh, but, but but we shall see how that that plays out. I think that you know the the gold, the gold guys have seen a bump this week. You know, they, they were some of them were down 50 percent last week, right? Uh, this week they're, they're they're back up to maybe. 20, 30 percent, you know, below the, the the highs of a month ago. But look, nuclear fuel working group. I, I look, come on, you 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 always got an opinion. 
nuclear fuel working group, Donald Trump, Mr. Donald Trump, I know you're a fan, um, that is taking its sweet time, right? There's, I know there's been a couple of energy secretaries, um, so there's, there's been a little transition period there, but nevertheless, is this just all politics? Are they ever gonna make a decision for you guys? I, I think right now that's not an important thing. And just a record, I'm a fan of what he does. I'm not a fan of how he does things. Okay. It's quite unpresidential. I like his policies and low taxes and more jobs. You know, it's just as an immigrant, I always think that the most honorable thing a person can do is put food on the table, as my parents did when they came from India. So but so that's I'm a policy driven person, not personality. Um, but I really don't think that's an issue right now. I don't think and worrying about um, that's foremost. Number one thing right now is the the, the virus. Um, you know, how do we deal with this coronavirus? And I think that's their focus. Um, so I don't know if that's, I think that's been pushed back. And my own guess, it'll be pushed back into the, the burner until they deal with a far bigger problem, which is pandemic that happening across the world and in America shutting down. Uh, I think worrying about 40% of people, Americans who live paycheck to paycheck is higher priority than worrying about, you know, uh, that's where we are. So, okay, you sound a bit defeatist there. I mean, you, you, you've got to worry about your shareholders, right? All CEOs have got to worry about their shareholders, right? And, I, and like I said at the beginning, you probably get a pass for a while. But when things re return to normality, what are the things that you're going to need in place or you're going to want to see in place? Because that the nuclear fuel working group is going to have to at some time resurface. There's a few obstacles in the way, like the elections, I guess, and you know, a few, few other things between now and the end of the year. Um, do you need them to come to some sort of resolution, give you some sort of clarity to give your shareholders certainty? Well if, any, well, if anything, we had a board meeting, and the first thing we said was, like, last year we recognized the cash issue, um, and we made some cutbacks last year, uh, made more cutbacks this uh, fall. We even have a special committee that says different phases of it. Um, we've gone back to them again and said, okay, we got to cut back more. To me, we're trying to get to a year's runway with the $3.5 million. Um, you know, the reality is there's – about a million and a half dollars you can't touch because there's security of our projects and basic permitting and things like that. So there's only certain money you have to spend. But obviously drilling, um, you're not gonna do any exploration drilling because in the past we have done it, our stock went down. So adding value is not gonna do that. Um, so really is how fast can you move up? To that end, you know, we started last year uh, looking at non-dilutive ways to get funding. And those talks have not stopped. So even though our stock is doing this, we're well aware that, you know, we don't know when the equity market's gonna come back. So what do you do? You cut back, you cut back. And that's hard because some of these people are key individuals who help us to make two discoveries. And it's really sad to tell them we don't have a job for them. And it's heartbreaking, you know, especially for some of us with long-term relationships with our technical team, but we had to. You know, we had um, eight, I think um, we're down to five and we'll probably be down to four or two soon. Um, so we have to make those cutbacks so that we can survive and not and, and not get scuffed in this window. And it's really right now we're in the middle of talks uh, at different levels, early, quite uh, along, the, along the way, with three different groups and ideas to come up with a non-dilutive funding that doesn't take us to a year, but maybe takes us three to four years. Right. Okay. So, me understand there's a few things going on there. So, you're, you've made a bunch of cutbacks starting from middle of last year and fall. A lot, a lot of people are doing this. Okay. And there's a, I agree with you. Those are tough conversations, and, and you know, people shouldn't treat those lightly. Those are people's lives. Um, I, I get it. I've, I've been there myself. It's not. It's not. It's not nice. I, I, that, that's awful. But at the same time, your market cap is dropping away because nothing's happening in the uranium space. You guys have, I think you did a, I think Ross was telling me when I spoke to him in, in November, you, you did a kind of revamp on your costs. You got it down from 1.5 billion down to 1.3. Um, to have conversations with people who would contemplate funding that level of funding, you got to speak from a position of strength and that the market hasn't helped you, right? That's, that's, that's a tough conversation to have, right? I mean, look, I'm not going to paint a rosy picture for our industry, but... I've been also been in this 1996 and I've seen it worse. I remember uranium was $7. Uh, 
you know, um, to me, um, it always takes a black swan event. And maybe if, and I, I look, you know, I have a lot of appreciation for Mr. Getzel and the wonderful team him and Grant have over there. And I know painful it is. You live in a small town like Saskatoon, you know, it's, you're letting off another 300 people. The ripple effect is 300 families, really, because they're good paying jobs. The, the problem is that we have to accept the fact of where it is. If Cameco, and I'm just quoting uh, David Talbot yesterday um, in his report and others I've read, if this goes more than four weeks, I think we can see a move in the price of uranium because those 18 million pounds almost all are sold to the U.S. Okay, almost all of that goes. And where is those U.S. utilities going to do that? Okay, so let, let, let's okay. Let's segue off to that for a second, but I do want to come back to the company, your company, in a second. But uh, we too have had maybe a couple of hundred messages from various investors of various sizes and some CEOs, and they are saying that that was a tactical move from Cameco. It's very upsetting to lay those people off, but at the same time, potentially that is the massive. I'm not going to say black swan. It, it, it's an event which will make people pay attention because that's going to dramatically change the supply side of the story. So is that what you're thinking? You think there's a, there's a little bit, is that just a byproduct or is that a deliberate action? Uh, you know what? I can't speculate, but I know that uh, what I know about is Tim and Grant as good people and the way they sure. treat people. Yep. They didn't treat this lightly. Um, you know, uh, but unfortunately, the law is the law. It's not an essential. <coughs> they can do, you know, they, they have to. Um, same reason Denison had to stop. The real question is when the Australia Olympic Dam stops. There's, uh, there's, I think, 14. America gets about 18 million pounds, I believe, from Cameco, 14 million from Australia. If those shut off, what happens? Um, and then um, Kazakhs. You know, I've been bugging some people within the group. I haven't gotten any answers. <laughs> the insider trading who was. But to me, the question is, is ripple effect. It's happened in Canada. Is Olympic Dam in Australia next, right? Um, and then finally, what happens to Kazakhs? Um, they may decide they don't want to, and that's their call. Um, they're in a different political situation than, you and you, than we are here. It's about winning elections. There, it's maybe not. So... I'd be interested to see what happens um, and uh, what they do. But I do believe that those numbers are significant. 18 million pounds just got taken out of the market. And for what I understand, um, they only had 6 million. So 18 million over a year is 15, 1.5 million pounds a month. So if they have 6 million pounds, they got enough for four months to help out. Right? So it all depends on how long they're shut down and what I also am not a mining expert, and how do you turn a, how do you turn a mine back on, right? That I don't that I don't know. How do you you know you just don't go clip. So it's a lot easier to turn off a coal mine, turn off a, and start right back up. You don't do that with nuclear, you know. Uh, maybe in France, uh, Dave Talbot said that maybe in France they're gonna look at that because it's seventy five percent of all their energy, electrical energy comes from nuclear. So be interesting to see. But obviously, I think the longer Camel Cigar Lake is off, the more chances are the U.S. utilities have to go on the market and then have to, it increases the price. Because that's all we will always talk about is the, the spot price, and that's a function of supply and demand. And we know there's demand, but the, we're all puzzled all the time. Is where the heck does supply keep coming from when people say there isn't any? So it depends how long this, I think it all comes down to how long Cigar Lake is down if they shut down uh, Olympic Dam and the Kazakhs do it. If all three do it, obviously the uranium price could do you know very well in the short term. It, yeah, it's it's uh, it'll be interesting to see how that evolves over the next coming weeks. Uh, I, I suspect there's more to it than that, but um, I also at the same time think there's going to be a lot of uranium CEOs smiling. Um, I suspect on that news. But let, let's come back to you. Let's come back to fission because, like I say, you know, you, the challenges of a CEO. Okay, so 2019 tough. 2020 didn't get much better. You are where you are. 70 million market cap today. Um, you've got a big project, shallow, high grade, all, all the good stuff, right? 
Um, but you got to get it financed. And you said, I've, I don't want, I want to do non-dilutive. Is that, is that reasonable of you? Because I know the share price is down, the market, the market cap is down, but to get people to the table, you're going to have to give something away. You can't expect to be 100% non-dilutive. I, I think that's unrealistic, right? So you've got CGN as a partner. I presume they're going to come to the table. I mean, are they still supportive? Are they going to follow their money? Are they part of the solution? Uh, you know, they're always part of the solution because we always need them on side. But I don't want to get into details. I don't want to put anybody offside. And I don't want to, you know, be using these things as to feed rumors that aren't true. But as a larger shareholder uh, of the company, you know, my cost is around 55 cents. So I've got two and a half, three million of my own money into it. Um, and watching it evaporate is painful. Um, and I'm upset. It makes me sick inside when I wake up in the morning and see the Dow off. But you control what you control. So we're controlling our spending. Um, we do have a lot of good relationships. Um, there are different ways you can do it non-dilutive. And um, like I said, we have two or three things in the fire. And I don't want to comment more than that because I don't want to mislead uh, listeners to buy or sell the stock. But I can tell you is that, you know, that's what takes up our time is learning to cut back and talk to people because there is money out there. I can assure you that we get a phone call yesterday. Would you like some flow through? And I said, give me a couple of weeks. I'm working on some things. So we had a firm, a very large firm said, would you like some flow through? The problem with flow through, we can only use it for drilling. Uh, but sometimes, obviously, you can do development work with it too. Mm. But I said, right now, no, but thank you. So we are actually getting phone calls. It's shocking because um, you know when there's blood in the streets, you buy. So I think there's some uh, um, uh, Warren Buffett fans, uh, Rick Rule fans out there that are buying stocks in the, while the blood is out. No, I think that's I think that's true. I know I know we have been last week, but it's so. I'm just interested in what's going on up here, Dev, because I wouldn't want to be in your position for love and money. Um, it's it because it's you got a tough problem to crack, right? So what's what do you think? It, what are the problems you're trying to solve? You can only cut costs for so long, right? And you've got you think you mentioned to me three and a half million bucks earlier, one and a half million you can't touch. You got two million bucks really to kind of see you through till. So what do you do? What do you do? Sure. <laughs> well, again, like you said, I think the thing to do is I've had bankers call and talk about uh, takeovers. I've had, uh, the, you know, That's what right. you often see from a CEO is a tip of an iceberg, right? Because every day someone calls and says, what about money? What about this? What about that? Um, That's our job is to see what's serious, what's not. Um, there's two or three things possible out there. Um, but till the money's in the bank, I don't. I don't, until the money is in the bank and a wire, when we got the money from CGN, you know, we could we made an announcement, but until the money was in our bank account and our CFO said it was there, then we talk about it. So, um, no, it's, well, first of all, I don't mind being me. I'm alive. I don't have the virus. I'm over 80 years old living in Italy. So I think there's, uh, I think we need to kind of, all of us take a little breath back and say, yeah. Um, so you, you grind it. We wake up every day at five and you start grinding. You're picking up the phone. But you don't bother people. But you know, you pick up the phone to our shareholders and just keep it social. How are you guys doing? You know, because I think these uh, no one's ever seen these times before. But at the same time, on the other side, flip side, you're talking to uh, other CEOs in the industry. How do we do it together? I'm pretty good friends with. I mean, Lee was here um, at my house, and you know, we played some golf together from Next Gen. I saw David Cates. Um, you know, I, I know uh, saw me or not read not long ago. Um, we're all we're in the same position where a lot of people are. So, you know, you keep the doors open, you keep the conversations going. Um, you know, we've been through two of these crazy cycles before, but obviously nothing of this size. Right. Um, the good news is people do need electric energy, right? Um, if I was producing uh, Aston Martins right now, yes, I'd be a little. Uh, or Maseratis in Italy, right? So I think that world does need energy. Uh, it may not need as much energy, but still, people are at home using more energy. So I would be interested in those facts. Like now that we're home, you know, when do we turn our ovens on? When do we, how much energy do we need? 
No, so I, I'm not I, sure I, the world I, needs I get, less energy. No, I get, I get gasoline, yes. I get it. I get it. Look, the, the big macro story, I get it. Nuclear is a big part of the macro story. But the problem is it's been sort of three, four years in the making. In the meantime, you know, you guys, the energy CEOs, are being hammered. Okay, you're being hammered. Um, but you, you mentioned something there about, you know, mergers, acquisitions. Those must be conversations which are happening. There's some, you know, conversations about you, you and some others getting together. But you know, do you think do you think you need to have those conversations, or do you think you can muddle your way through this? I think. Well, no, I, I I think first of all, number one rule is what are you doing for the shoulders in the, in the long run, right? If 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 someone came to me with an idea that is better for our shareholders in the long run you always have to look at it. In fact, part of my job is to take that in and then say, talk to the board about it. Does that include right? a merger and with, uh, a, does that include a merger with next gen? Would that be, would that make sense to you? Well, you know, um, a lovely, but you know, he's got a higher market cap. You'd have to be, you know, obviously the guy with a bigger market cap takes the other guy out. It's not the way around. We're not doing an RTO. It's like me going to Cameco. Hey, let me, you know, um, but I think those conversations are always on the table, but you know, um, everybody's got their um, issues, whether it's debt, whether it's um, one of the great things our team has done is uh, got rid of this silliness of people say, well, how can you mine and how can you mine underwater? Okay, well, we have a four mines do that. I don't know why it'd be different, but you know, one of the things Ross and the team did, that's why we did another pre-feasibility. We said, well, if we go underground, we actually save 300 million in one year in savings. Um, and it takes care of this idea, the concern about being under the water. Now, the pillar will take some of that, some of that uranium out. So there's no such thing as a perfect uh, mix. But I do think the fact that we've been able to um, uh, reduce the risk, show it works underground just as well. In fact, the cost went like you know, six ninety to seven ten. It's, it's nothing. So I think we tried to do that and saying if we need to go underground, we can. You know. But back to your issue, um, every morning, a good CEO wakes up and worries. We always, you know, on the hand, we always sort of hope for the best. Yeah, mine shut down, you know, uranium will go to 30 bucks and save our asses. But you can't live in that world. Hope is not a strategy. Instead, you got to start looking at going, do we, where do we cut back more? What is, what, what about me? What about other staff? Um, and, and it's always easy as shareholders to say, why don't they do this and why don't they do that? Well, I've been doing this since 1996 and I realized good people, you lose them, they're gone. Then right. everybody scrambles all the time. So you gotta be able to, bottom line is this, we wanna act, not react. And and I think the fact that, you know, we've got some really good long-term shareholders at CGN. They're long-term players. And I think that's important. Well, the, the, I, well they're long, um... But they're also stuck in there at the moment, okay? But so, just to your point you just made is I, I get the cost cutting exercise, and you're you're looking for options all the time. But, but get, tell me what I mean. I, you know, picking up the phone every day, speaking to shareholders. That's not that's that can't be more. There's more to it, right? Okay. Again, all I can tell you is what I've been doing since 1996, and we have won every award possible. And the strategy is always the same: keep an open mind, keep conversations open. When bankers call me, um, I you know. Sometimes you want to tell them, well, that's a really not a smart idea. But you say, thank you, um, uh, consider it. You talk to, um, you know, Ross and the rest of the team and go, that's crazy. Um, don't worry. We, even the big companies have offered us some ideas. And I was just shook my head at them, you know. And so, but no, I, look, these aren't good times. I'm not going to tell everybody's rosy times, but this is also, you know, you got to look at the facts. Look, mm -hmm. this project won every award because this project is a unicorn it has all the advantages that africa has always wanted when they sold assets, all the assets to china that it was shallow we're in canada we're high grade and so this project is unique and i and we don't have any debt in the company you know so if we go out and get debt it'll be our first debt other people have 100 million plus debt no, I, like Jeff, there's, there's a, there's, that money going to come? Look, the asset's great. Not 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 debating that. Not debating that. You know, I, I, you know, awards, whatever. I, you know, awards are awards. I don't, I don't really care about awards. What I care about is you've got a good asset, which you have. Okay, you understand the 
economics, I, I think you've, you know, with this revised economics, you've said in a newsletter recently, you, you, you could mine this thing at 25 bucks, you wouldn't make much money, but you think that you could do it economically at that level. So I don't know where that's coming from or if that we still, still believe well, like that. It's coming from the cash costs. What happens is the cash costs um, are quite uh, low, like seven, eight bucks, but you got other costs, you got to recover the thing. And so it's, you know, uh, Ross has always said in the low 20s, high teens. That's right. just being realistic. But the cash costs are seven bucks according to experts, but very few things work out exactly as you thought. Um, but you know what, here's something that you should understand though. Mm -hmm. When we walk into a room with our project, whether I'm sitting down with industry players or bankers, that project does matter. So you may say awards don't matter, but I just completely disagree with you on it because it says that it's like me, if, if I come in, you're a, you sell cars, and I say, can you sell my Mercedes for me or can you sell my old truck? What do you want to sell? So depending on your audience, the bottom line is, the quality of a project matters when you go look for money. Like when I'm talking to lenders, I say fission. They get it. No, I, I, I get that. No, I, not, the, I went in, the point I'm yeah. arguing, Dev, is awards don't get you that. The quality of your project gets you that. Okay, well, you know, if you know, I can sell a I can sell a truck and make more margin than I could on maybe the the Mercedes, to use your example. Okay, so I'm worried about the economics. So. When you're marching into these institutional guys and you're asking for a lot of money, right? There's a big project, you know, and the, you know, and the, and the, you know, IRRs are, are good. That's all great. And you've been talking, but the thing is, you've been talking to them about for a long time. What are they saying to you? What are they waiting for in the market? Who's they? Well, the, the guy. Give me examples. Who you think no, I'm no, talking to? Well, the they is the people that are you, you tell me money now. Yeah, the, like, the, the they is the people right that now, you told me you're talking to. The 30, the, the, the people, there are two types of people. You, I think you got them a bit confused. I'm looking for money now, so I have three to four of your runway. When we need a billion dollars, that's an entirely different thing. By that time, though, we will have a feasibility, a bank of feasibility. We can walk in and get credit. We're talking right now. It does matter. When we pick up the phone to some of the players in the industry, I'm not going to name them. I'm not going to do that. Uh, when we talk to them, um, uh, I go in there and so this is fission. They go, yeah, let's talk. Whereas if I had an exploration project and I found a hundred thousand pounds, that's the the guy that's in trouble are the exploration companies, the oh, project yeah. generators. Oh yeah, because like we have fission three point oh, which is a project generator. But how can you pro generate a project when everybody out there is bankrupt? The only the project model works in a good bull market. Meanwhile, you got to do some work yourself. So I, I think the companies that don't have a drilled out asset um, that's moving towards feasibility, they're the ones more in trouble because they're still trying to find something to do a feasibility on. Yeah. I think that's more the issue. And I don't wish them any bad luck because I know we're doing it at Vision 3.0. It's a very tough business. Okay, so, so in that example you gave me, so you, you want a three, four year runway. So how much money are we talking about for that piece? Well, well, it depends on how aggressive we want to be, but I think you need to get at least 10 million. Uh, you might take it in pieces. You might do 20 million, 30. Uh, I'm not going to go for 120 million. Um, first of all, we can't. Um, but you know, uh, that's. Uh, but I think you want enough money to move the project forward. And they're just not going to give you money for your overhead. They want to see the project move ahead. Nobody funds overhead, so I think we're very careful of that. We want to move it, uh, take the steps. Um, might be a little slower. Obviously, you can't do anything in the next three, four months. But once you can, you want to move it towards. Uh, move it, you know, we got a couple steps. We can. You, the feasibility thing is broken into three key steps. First one's fifteen million, then ten. So you don't have to do it all. You have to get all the money at once. Okay. So you, so you you've got a kind of clear path, but so. That doesn't seem like a lot of money to me. So what's the feedback that you're getting from those guys? Why aren't they going, we, we understand the macro story, we bought, you spend a lot of time in your PowerPoint talking about the macro, it's very clear. And so do a lot of other people, right? But what's, what's stopping them? Why don't they go now? Why don't they get, get you going? I don't, first of all, it's not about stopping. Sometimes people offer you deals that aren't any good. You're losing too much, right? Uh, someone comes along and says, I'll give you this, but I want to charge you 25%. I'm using a bad example. I want 25% interest, right? 
well, you can get some money, but you choke the company. But you're, you're making an arbit But you're making a choice there. You're saying, uh, I don't want that short-term pain for that long-term gain. I think this thing's going to work itself out. You've got two million spare floating cash, which will kind of see you through, let's say, twelve months, right? If you if you've cut the cost back properly. Um, I think in 12 months time, there's no way this market is going to be the same as it is today. I'm going to get a better deal. Is, is that the bet you're yes. making? No, 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 that's not the bet I'm making. That's not what I've said at all. We should replay this video and I'll tell you, Go on, cutting then. costs, looking for money. I have never said, I'm going to dance around until for 12 months, put my bury my head, hope things get better. That's not how you do your job. What I've said is, it's a constant cut expenses, look for money. As I said to you, we're talking to groups, different levels of uh, where we're at, the documents and everything, or just talking, right? So that will never stop. Um, had a phone call this morning from somebody from Europe saying, what do you think your needs are? So look, my, my door is open, um, everybody calls, you see me answer every tweet, every sometime ask me a question, my door is open. We don't run and hide. You know, one of the things that bothers me with a lot of CEOs when things get bad, they just hide their head. You know, for me, um, uh, I I want to be out there and we'll take the shots, you know, but, but we'll put our, again, when people are investing, look at the asset and look at the track record. And if you, and then step back and look at the environment we're in, in this virus stage where, you know, people can't leave their homes except for this. These are crazy times. Yeah. But you know what, despite the crazy times, I'm getting phone calls about mergers, about other ideas. So you you may not, people are frozen, but smart people are not frozen. Okay, fair enough. You mentioned something there, tweets. Now, the reason we're having this call is you, someone tweeted about you uh, and the salaries and the overheads that you guys are kind of burning through, and you went straight back at them. You went for the throat. Uh, pretty yeah. pretty quick, right? So you definitely know shrinking violet, and you're not well, hiding. No, I'm I not give you that. Violet because I, I'm also, but if something is something is untrue and not factual, right, it needs to be said. Um, if you look at, you know, it doesn't take a genius to pick up some financials and see if some people are making somewhere between five to six times what I make, right? Um, so I know there's lots of people out there who make much more money than me. So. Um, do we need to cut that back? That's one of the issues in front of the special committee. You know, one of the you know one of the challenges is if you're a, a venture exchange company, you can actually say we'll give you shares, but there's a real limit when you're on the tier one board of what you can do. That's one of our problems. When, when you're tier one, you can't say we're not going to pay you, uh, but we'll give you some shares. There are some issues there, and I'm pretty sure people listed in New York have the same issues. So it's not as simple as it's very hard to defer incomes, right? Because of some of the exchanges rules. So that's kind of some of the stumbling blocks people aren't aware. But, but, but to you, me- Can you as a board not make a decision? I don't know what the special committee does, but can you, CEO, you as the board go, hey, we're, you know, I think your salaries are out there for everyone to see. You're in whatever, 500, 500 bucks plus another 90 director's fees, et cetera. You know, it is what it is. We've, you, and just so that you was know, voted on. Sure. Presumably. But just so you know, it's down to 18 cash for um, board members now. We've, we've cut it slashed it significantly, right? Per month. Uh, there's more changes. Like, 18 per month. No, it's no, no $2,000 a month cash versus instead of 90000 over a year, it's going to be 18000 this year. That's on the so directors, right? But you still pick up right. a salary. And, Are you right. cutting that and, back? And then we're also looking at ways to, we're looking at ways to go shares and cash. Um, you know, when I raised 82 million, I didn't get $800,000, did I? No. Um, so uh, I get it. Um, people can be pissed off and angry. I get it. But at the same time, contracts are contracts. And, uh, you know, I didn't ask for, like I said, I don't ask for $1.7 million a year when I raised 82 million, did I? No, I stuck with my salary. So I don't ask for those things, right? I don't make a million bucks. like. There's guys making $1.7 million. I think plus, I know who plus, you're plus. talking about. I think I do know who right, you're I'm referring not gonna, to. But my point is, I will take the shots. Okay, I'm, I'm a big boy. Um, but if someone is lying about something, yeah, 
I, I'm not going to sit back and say, yeah, it's okay for you to lie and, and spit out mistruths. Okay. I don't. Okay, so let me uh, let me clear it because they, those people will be watching this. Okay, so you're you're cutting back the director's fees to eighteen thousand a year from ninety. Okay, you are talking about reducing salary potentially, but Everybody, within the conflict, including mine, right? Including mine, Ross's. We cut back our. Uh, we're looking at accounting. You know, we laid off two people already last year. We're looking at laying off two more this year. Um, you know. Um, but it's like we live in another one of the challenges good or bad we live in Kelowna it's not that easy to just go pick up on an accountant in fact one of the biggest issues we've had over the years is hiring good accounting people um, they're just hard to find and we live in a small town which is a negative so we've thought about outsourcing it you know one of the things that we have a really sharp guy on our board named Rob Chang uh, by the way you should interview him he's a, actually as you know he was an analyst uh, with Cancer Fitzgerald a uranium analyst and being on BNN more than anybody I probably know um, on a personal level. And, you know, he's on another board. He's, they've gone through this. And so he's been really advantageous. So this is an ongoing process every day. Got it. So again, I want to be clear for, for people like that. You, so you, will you, when you've made that decision, I would probably encourage you to just let everyone know. It just, it's a big statement. Okay. It's a big statement. No, absolutely. I think that the problem is, though, you got to remember is that, you know, until it's, it's not like you're just going, you can't pick one fruit. It's the way this is done is we look at it as a whole package. You know, what are we doing market? For example, marketing wise, you know, uh, some people still spending 400000 a month. We're trying to get it down to ten to 15000 a month. Our goal this year to spend ten to 15000 in total of online trade shows, everything. I'll give you an example. If everybody went to PDAC, They've only seen three people, myself, Ross, and Bob Hemmerling. Uh, in previous years, we would have Ross and I doing all the meetings and two or three people there and also dealing with all, some, all the vendors show up there too that we do business with, right? And it's also a place for technical meetings. So we would bring a technical team out. We'd bring up eight to 12 people. Right. This year, it was three. So... Um, you know, we've got a policy of flying economy unless you get upgraded. Uh, we put all those changes in the fall. And obviously, we'll look at that again. Um, so I think it, it's an ongoing process. But, you know, I think that the message I want shareholders to know is that we're not deaf and we're not blind. I can see the stock price is 15. Uh, I can hear. I can see how much more we're burning. There are nights I don't sleep. But I'm not going to tweet about it and going, somebody feels sorry for me because we're not whatever. But the reality is, is that there's a lot of stress. You know, I yeah, can't I mean, imagine being I, 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 I think that's one of those, like, you know, be blunt with you. I think that, you know, when times are good, people get a little bit cavalier with the, with the cash. And I think, you know, shareholders look at that. And when times get tough, you know, it kind of res resets the mind somewhat. And I think, you know, I think you're, I think you're suffering from a bit of that is, is the truth, yeah. right? Oh, no, not at all. I, look, again, it's, um, are you poor? Let me ask, are you poor? And you're gonna say, well, compared to so-and-so. Just, you can't ask that question. All I'm asking you to look at is how much other companies have, will spend on online stuff, uh, and et cetera, and they've been successful with it. Um, you know, um, you know, so we can talk offline about some of that stuff. But the reality is when, when stocks are up, um, everybody's prices go up. You want to do a banner with somebody because that's where the world is. People, you know, the old days we sent out documents to people. The world is now people want to, they, they're already on a particular website. They want to click on something into the decision. The online world has changed. But you've never seen us spend a lot of money on that. And maybe we should have. See, for every one of one guy says you're not, uh, you're doing too much. You get a comment of somebody you're not doing anything, you know. But look at so and so. Look at their stock does well because they actually go out there and spend money, okay. and they do. And they so I, I, the question is, um, what is enough? It's all relative to what to to our industry. Right. And I, we've tried to find a balance. It's simple. For example, if there, if um, UEC is there. Denison's there, our competitors are like a one-to-one, -one. we will go to it. Um, we don't go to the smaller ones, but sometimes I will just show up, right? So it, it's not that easy and simple, 
because you get pressure from people saying you're not getting your story out enough. That's why your stock is down. And you got some people saying, well, you're spending too much money. Is there a right answer? Somewhere in there, you do your best. Okay. And you, so what was, and, and just another commitment from you is you, you've, got, you've got some outside interests. I don't, again, I don't think you're necessarily the first or the last CEO to have outside interests, but are you going to park those up? I'm talking about, you know, um, Shine, Rock, Wealth, and Gallagher. Are, are those companies which you're directors of, are you going to spend any time on those or are you focused 100% on fishing? Well, you're always, that's always a tough question. But right now, it's what's in hand is dealing with um, what it position in hand. It's like, what is Trump going to deal with today? You have your priority, but there's certain things you got to park aside and say, guys, we got to write the, the flagship. And, you know, but at the same time, you know, you you can only control what you control. Um, you know, I, I was on that side of investing before and... Um, you know, should a, a um, should a guy be doing a Brazilian gold deal and something else? I don't know. I'm not. It, it's funny when things are great. Nobody asks those questions. Of course right? they don't. Because no they're all cares. making money. Exactly. Nobody cares. When the stocks go down, what's wrong? And maybe maybe the stock shouldn't have been up there. So the question people never asked in this crash is: Should the S and P be trading at 20 times P? I don't think it should. Historically, it's shown that, right? So when people say, why did something fall? My question is, why did it go up? Sometimes we ask the wrong questions. I've been in, like I said, an investor for some time. And uh, Rick Rule always says, bear markets return money to the rightful owners. <laughs> Which is a great line. He's a, he's a great man. I like him. I like him. But, 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 just, but just on those other contracts, you've got agreements with those companies, right? You know, you, that you have made, you've got obligations with them, agreements with them. So... Not, not like you think, right? You know, to me, um, again, I think people always love to jump to conclusions and, and et cetera. I can tell you is that, you know, one of the phone calls you make is, guys, you got to handle this. I can't. I, these conversations happen all the time. But at the same time, you got to be sensitive. There are, you know, um, people are, uh, some people are really affected by this, you know. So you try not to uh, uh, dump on people and just, you try to, um, look, if people ask me how I'm dealing with this virus, and I said, well, 102 people die every day in a car accident in the United States. I'm not going to stop driving, but I'll make sure I stay on my side of the lane and make sure that we all take a defensive driving course, right? So, but the same thing here. Um, I have my views, whether we did enough early, we're doing too much now, but you've got to react to what you have. So I've gone to people and said, guys, you, you need to run with us for a little bit. And more importantly, I don't think you get, the equity markets are coming back unless you're in biotech and making masks. Okay, uh, I'm sure there's. I'm sure some of the companies that were gold companies, uranium companies, being gold became gold companies are not going to switch to uh, biotech too soon. I'm sure we're going to see that. Everybody making a different mask, um, but I think that you've got to focus on where the money is right now. Um, our focus is 100% on getting the money in the door, cutting our expenses. Again. A good way to not become an alcoholic is control what you control, and you can't control those things. But so we are trying to control what we control. Are you worried about the things you can't control? I mean, forget COVID. I'm I'm, I'm talking about the speed at which this market comes back. I don't worry. Worry, no. Plan for it, yes. The old saying we've talked about it: you hope for the best, but you plan for the worst, right? And that's how we've done it. Um, some people criticize us for not moving the project fast enough because some of our competitors did, but I didn't want $100 million in debt. I don't believe that, right? So I think um, there are pros and cons of speeding up. You run out of money. And that was always one of our fears. But, you know, we caught it last year. We started making changes. And should we have done more? Yeah, if you had told me the virus this spring, yeah, I would have done more. Right, okay. So I want to finish with CGN. They're a big 19.9% shareholder. Um, what are those phone calls like? Um, well, first of all, the last two months as I was phoning our main guy and making sure his family's okay. Um, you know, uh, the way they attacked us. So that's one of the first conversations. And two, they have a long-term view, right? Um, China can turn on a dime. They can shut the whole country down like that. We do that as political issues. 
you know, um, so I think for them, they're moving ahead. They're not cutting back their, they've, as you've seen, the factories are starting to work again. That was, they, for seven weeks, they were kind of shut down and now they're back. So I don't see China controlling. You remember, you have to remember the motivation for CGN investing, okay? They believe in the middle of this uh, 2024, 25 is when, um, especially in 2027, Cigar Lake, if you know, um, is running out of ore. Um, and that's when they have been planning for mentally, they made a 10 year investment. They're not like, uh, you know, they have a long-term view. I spoke to Paul last night. Um, that's their view. They have a long-term view of the world. They need more nuclear power. For sure, but I'm, I'm thinking more from the perspective, they've given you 82 million bucks for 20, effectively 20% 20 of the company. That money's now gone. It, we're sitting at 70 million bucks today. They must recognize that's going to take some time to kind of recoup their investment. So what are the calls in terms of the, the project rather than, you know, what's going on in the world? I mean, are you under any pressure from those guys to do things differently, to take some of these deals, to take some of this other money, as expensive as it may be? <clears throat> every, every, everything we look at, we fly by them. Right. Everything. You know, um, besides a, a formal relationship, we have a personal relationship with Paul Vaughn, a very, very bright young man. Um, you know, we talk on WeChat and, you know, uh, and what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Um, if it's a big issue, yeah, I was, you know, obviously in the past we would go to one to one and jump over to Shanghai in a car and go see him, uh, Shenzhen, pardon me, but we don't do that. So no, anything big that we're looking at, like a merger or, um, royalties or streams, uh, all these different ideas that you get from people, um, you say, what do you think? What do you think? Because there's no use spending a whole lot of time on a project and your big shoulder goes, I'm not comfortable with that, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it's a, not a simple, you know, um, what do you think? But we get, I guess, an idea one a day from somebody doing something. The big ones, I'll say, what do you think? For example, somebody, uh, a banker came to us recently, what do you think of this idea? I think they're interested. And I said, uh, give me a couple of weeks. I've got some stuff in front of me, right? I've got to get some, uh, you know, it's a binary decision, yes or no. And I said, let's talk in a couple of weeks. But but I did obviously pick up the phone and say, hey, Paul, what do you, you know, here's an idea. We're not doing anything about it, but I just want you to know that it's out there. I don't like it, but my job as a CEO is to bring these things to the board uh, and ask what their thoughts are. And, uh, but you only bring, the ones that have actually percolated, otherwise you annoy the crap out of your shareholder, uh, your board by sending them every fluty idea by a banker out there. You'd be amazed how many times you'll say no to a banker and the seventh time you offer the same deal. <laughs> no, I wouldn't actually. I used to be, I used to be that guy, I think. Um, <laughs> Dev, brilliant to speak to you. Thanks for the update. I know it's, it's, it's tough time. So um, I, I appreciate your candidness on yeah. some of the things I asked you yeah. and, today. And, and just so you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to hide. Um, but, you know, after the fact, I'm happy. If something happens, I'm happy to tell you what happened. But, you know, um, as a tier one company, we have to be extra careful what we share, what we don't share. Um, you know, but the message is, but we're not blind. We can see the stock price. I see it, you know, I'm up at 5 a.m. I'm checking the uh, you know, other markets. And um, all I can say is that we are hearing our shareholders, CGN who put 82 million in, those who put uh, $1,000 in, we're well aware. Um, and we will navigate this. We will get through this. I'm confident of that. Not just as a country, but as a company, we will. And, uh, We've got, Ross is a phenomenal a guy to work with. We have a strong shareholder and we will turn over every rock uh, possible out there. And we have good relationships out there and we will continue to pursue them. And hopefully we can come up with something that uh, gives us more than a year's runway. Well, that'd be great. I mean, uh, let's, let's hope we can move it from words to actions and, and announcements, all right? Every single time. And I think you've committed to make, you know, clarify for the market these cost cutting exercises with regards to all the costs that you're going to be cutting including including your own you know salary remuneration etc sure. right so like, like i said 
the directors made that decision last year, just so you know, even a year and a half ago, we started paying them more in shares. Even mm. two, three years ago, we said, look guys, uh, we ne you need to take shares, right? So rules allowed them not to take cash. Now we've gone extreme and said, you only get 2,000 cash, 1,000 in stock. So that's it. So you've gone from nine, 90,000 down, you dropped about 70% there. That's an example of how severe we're going with a lot of things. Right. Right. Because we know that. You know, I, Tom Brady said it's better to say well done than well said. <laughs> Ex exactly. Exactly. And don't forget your salary and Ross's salary in there as well. That would be a big statement to the market if you did something about that. Okay. Dev, awesome to speak to you as ever. I can't believe it's been so long. Um, I'm sorry it's been a tough year for, for you in the uranium space. Uh, hopefully some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, maybe this Cameco announcement's bigger than we realize. You know, it, like these are tough times and it's, it's shocked me that this you know bear market has gone so long. It's been frustrating and it's proven that many of us are wrong. You know, how many CEOs from Cameco to, we're all in shock. I mean, I, I wish you could sit down one day. Maybe that's what we need to do is have a Zoom phone call with all the CEOs and have a beer in front of us and we can all talk about it. You know, and maybe that should be your next one. Get get um, Kate's, get, get Amir and uh, um, uh, get Lee and we'll do a Zoom chat and, uh, and not talk about our companies, just talk about how we're handling it, you know. And, uh, but no, everybody saw this last year and we started making cutbacks, but obviously, this coronavirus is a whole new thing we've never seen. Right? It it um, makes you realize what is and is not important. But at the same time, there's a lot of people we've been contacting, I've been dealing with a few today, actually, people yeah. ringing up asking for advice, they're having to remortgage their house, uh, right. look at selling shares at 50% losses. You know, it, it it's real It's real out there, you well, know, and we're all, it's, it's, we're all <laughs> feeling it, but yeah. some more than others, and it's, it, it's, it's not nice. Well, it's sad, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to take away from, but to me, like I said, you got 40 million Americans out there um, that live paid to the paycheck. Um, you know, so I, I, I see, I, I can see we need to be safe and keep away from each other. Um, but there's the health issue. And for me, as an as outsider, I look at uh, how much damage it can do, right? If you ever seen some of the pictures in Italy of those people, they were in terrible shape before they went. Have you been, have you been on a cruise ship where diet and anything was, I mean, both people go on those things, they can eat forever. So people who go on those things um, aren't usually in the best of shape, older, because they, they just want to sit in a boat and watch things. So I think... You know, numbers aren't numbers. You know, you got to look at there's really predisposed. So to me, one of the concerns I have is that, yeah, there's the health risk, but there's a homeless risk. There's a risk of mothers who are single moms out there that um, work on in the restaurant. And there's 40 million Americans with paycheck to paycheck. That's, to me, just as important, you know, as the health issue. So I have my views are different than most, but um, as a company, that doesn't mean every morning we don't sit there and go through the numbers and et cetera. But uh, these are strange times and it is very, it's sad. I'm, I'm afraid of people going homeless in, 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 the, in the coming months. Who'd be a politician or a CEO, Dev? Uh, neither. <laughs> I think I'd, uh, I want your job. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much. Well, I um, appreciate your time today, Dev. Stay in hey, touch. Time, Let us know when there's Please. some big news. Pick up the phone and uh, give us Any a call. Time. Okay, Dev, appreciate it. Happy to have do a, that. Have I a great rest so. of the week. <laughs> okay. Okay, take care.